Unsuspecting members of the new congregations in the dark that their new priest was a suspected sexual predator. Prosecutors said Lynn was more interested in protecting the reputation of the Catholic Church than in protecting children. I always sleep in the same bed and he'd always, you know, grab me every night, you know, during the night and like talk to me before we go to bed and just, you know, just be, you know, fond of me and touching me. ESPN did not report the story back in 2003 because we could not find any corroboration. Behavior of a serial pedophile and the testimony ended today with victim number nine as he's known in, in, in court records and it was simply brutal for the jury to hear. He testified he was abused several times in the basement of Jerry Sandusky's home and he portrayed that basement as, as just a house of horrors. Instead of doing harm to myself, I would vent that harm, that anger, towards other individuals that look like me. It's like instead of me committing suicide, I desired to kill those that look like me. I desired to do harm to those that look like me because they was all African Americans. And it was like a self-hate, you know, having that low self-esteem for myself, um, hate for myself. I hated those that look like me. a babysitter that touched me. I had to go counseling for about three years and then I was put in a special class because I didn't know if I was straight or what. I've been going through this for a long time. Low self-esteem compiled with a bad attitude placed me in many situations where I couldn't obtain a job. And even after obtaining a job, I couldn't keep a job, which placed me on the streets of Dothan, peddling crack cocaine. The thing was just proving, you know, that I'm a boy. I'm a part of the fraternity of boys. You know, I'm going to act out um, to prove, you know, that nah, I didn't create this atmosphere. Well, I got involved because I've actually worked in um, family services for about 13 years and in the course of that I've noticed the impact that drugs and alcohol and um, the history of abuse plays and how people parent their children. But the victim, we are stagnated mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. And uh, the theme of this whole project is to to try to amp up parents, you know, to educate their children that look, you have a lot of people out here with different sexual appetites. And it's important, it's vitally important that you create an atmosphere for your child to be able to come to you and say, you know, look, this is how I was touched, this is what was said to me. How do you interpret that? The best coach in life starts out with your parents. As African Americans, we want to hold this subject to be taboo, taboo, and that's how I see it. But when I saw other people's stories started surfacing, I was like, yeah, I knew it. I mean, at first, my dad would talk to me for like six, seven months, and then after that, he got used to the idea. My mom, she accepted me right away. My sister didn't do it, all but my brother, he still don't accept it. Really? Yeah. He's, he said it's a curse. He don't, he don't like the idea. Let me share this with you. When you're doing time, don't ever get comfortable <laughs> with pulling up on people and asking them how much time they done. You got guys who have been sentenced to all kind of type times, man, for murder, 
kidnapping, robbery. You can really use your story and your um, trauma um, to be able to help empower other people to work through that by showing them how you were able to overcome um, that abuse and the impacts of it. And I think it's really important for people to step up and, and talk about um, their life and the different things that happened in it and to help raise awareness so that you can prevent this from happening from other children and so that other people who have been abused don't feel like they're all alone.